To me, entrepreneurship is about creating change, not just creating companies. In 2018, a survey by Ernst & Young showed that more than 41% of teenagers considered as a primary career being an entrepreneur over taking a traditional job. But who can blame them? Today in the media, we see portrayals of successful entrepreneurs. Elon Musk says he's now launching a hostile takeover of Twitter. Jeff Bezos and his three crewmates are now headed to space. Everybody ends up wanting to follow in their footsteps. In fact, I did. 10 years ago, I started building countless side projects, iPhone apps, websites, APIs, payments platforms, until eventually I started my company, Speechify, which now has more than 100 teammates who work on it full time and more than 10 million users who regularly use the platform. Hi friends, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Cliff Weitzman, I'm the CEO of Speechify, and in this channel, we talk about my views about business, entrepreneurship, and how to get the most out of life. When I first started Speechify, I had an idea of the types of challenges I would encounter, but in reality, the challenges were different than what I had in my head. The glamorous side of entrepreneurship is the side we always see in the media. It's the one saying, you know, X company sold for billions of dollars, or X person is now the richest person in the world. And although those are amazing accomplishments, the media almost never covers the inner workings of entrepreneurship that are not necessarily always the prettiest. Try, trying to build a company and have it succeed is like eating glass and staring into the abyss. That is what we're going to be focusing on today. When I started Speechify, I was a student at Brown University. I was studying renewable energy engineering at the time, and many of my friends were going off and getting jobs at Apple, Google, Goldman Sachs, McKinsey, etc. And that was a success. You don't get many opportunities in life to take a step back and reassess and take a step off of the normal treadmill. But when I graduated college, I knew that this was my moment. And so I didn't take the job at Google and I just stayed on campus, kind of like hanging out. And I have a lot of friends who are very successful entrepreneurs who when I told them about Speechify and things that I was working on, uh, told me they did not think that it would work out, that it was risky, not a good idea. And because they thought it was not good, they didn't consider it to be a valuable thing and therefore it looks like I'm being lazy. In that situation, what even makes you wake up in the morning? Like I have super bad ADD and I go to sleep really late. It's hard for me to fall asleep. So it's so tempting to just, just go on YouTube at midnight at five in the morning, go to sleep, you wake up at 2 p.m. Why should you wake up at nine? Especially if you're a solo founder. And so my solution was I would book a meeting with someone 9 a.m. every single morning and I would hop either on a coffee or a Zoom call or eventually what ended up working the best is I had a recurring meeting at the gym with my friend Shaitu at 9 a.m. every single morning. So I would show up at the gym 9 a.m. every single day. The next thing is, okay, well, you got yourself to wake up. How are you gonna get yourself to do work? No one's keeping you accountable. When you don't have an external system to validate your work and make sure that it's there on time, there's no motivation to do work. What is the forcing function to make you pull that all-nighter? For me, it's like the deadline for Speechify was yesterday and it's late and I gotta do it now. I'm infamous for not sleeping. I will go to sleep at five in the morning almost every single day if you let me because I just want to work. I will hop on phone calls with other people or force them into a Zoom with me and I'll babysit them to make sure that the work gets done because I'm so motivated. I'm like that kid in a group project that like really cares and this is why we end up being successful. And it was just me motivating myself. And then eventually Simon joined. I had this other person on the other side of the world who really cared about what I was doing too. And when I would put in work, real, real work, real motivation, this guy had the same amount of motivation. And when I brought him to the United States, Simon would leave the office at midnight every single day. And this was a fire that no one else in the early team had. And so really, that's the biggest, biggest trick for motivating yourself is find the right people. I don't know if you guys ever went running by yourself versus running with your track team. It's so much easier to keep running with 10 other people who are running. You're not gonna be the one person lying behind. And so sometimes you're tired, sometimes your friend is tired, but if you're all running together, none of you ever stop. Now, the other big challenge is what to work on. Finding the idea is one of the most challenging things. And here's the framework for how to solve that problem. I thought I would be a billionaire by the time I graduated college. Like I was sure of it when I was like 17, 18 years old. I was very disappointed in myself, to be honest with you, at the end of sophomore year, when I did not drop out of school to run a company full time. Because Bill Gates dropped out after sophomore year. Evan Spiegel dropped out after sophomore year. Mark Zuckerberg dropped out after sophomore year. Tyler Weitzman, my brother, left school after sophomore year. And I did not. Eventually I graduated, but I did not know what I wanted to work on. In the end, I wrote a criteria for what were the things I wanted to work on. And the rule was it needed to be a smart app or website with a clever business model. I did not want to make money off of ads. I want to make money directly by having users pay me for real value that I create for them. And I wanted to be the person that I needed most when I was young. Uh, I realized that my satisfaction uh, comes as a result of creating value. And I realized while working on other projects that my level of satisfaction 
increases a lot if I create value for people who are similar to me, especially if they're vulnerable or don't have someone protecting them. But that was not enough. It needed to be a company that also would be a billion dollar company. For a long time, I was using screen readers on my computer to read stuff. I never thought that that could be a business that would be a billion dollar company because I could not see a way of building something that was 10x better. Then. I read a bunch of academic papers about the applications of deep learning, text-to-speech, where for the first time you could make text-to-speech at the quality of human speech. And there were six categories of narrow applications of deep learning that completely changed that I implemented into Speechify. What I saw is a big shift in the supply side of what you could create around that time, and also a shift in the behavior where for the first time you had podcasts, audiobooks, AirPods, COVID changed how people consume information via audio. And so there was a demand side shift and a supply side shift. And I was like, I want to work in this intersection. So that's how I built the thesis around what I wanted to build. Not to mention the fact that no matter what you did, no matter what bad user metrics I got, you could never convince me that text to speech was not amazing because it changed my life. And before I started working on Speechify as a product for other people, I made videos teaching them how to use the minimum viable product I had built when I was a freshman in college. And those videos got hundreds of thousands of views with 300 comments, people saying, I'm literally crying. My third grader is doing her homework by herself. So I was sold on the idea. So recruiting is actually the most difficult thing about a startup. Here's why. You've got to convince people to leave their job and come follow you into the abyss that is completely unstructured, undefined, not guaranteed. And they're leaving a job at Google where they have nap pods, lunch, gym, laundry, other smart people around them, guaranteed really high incomes. Not only that, someone from Google or Apple or Facebook or Netflix or any of these companies when you're starting off, they're much more robust in their engineering skill set, and they're going to build for the long term. They don't have the mindset of scrappy, move fast and break things. And so ideally, you actually want to hire younger people, in my personal opinion, who have not been inundated with the culture of building robustly. We had this challenge after a long time. I succeeded in hiring the people from Apple and Snapchat and Google, etc. And it turned out not right. Instead, I found young people with fire in the belly, high loyalty to the team, ability to learn really fast, ability to move metrics and significantly impact the business. And that became our hiring philosophy in general. And we hire people internationally. And the keys once more was finding people who were as or more motivated than me. So in building a startup, the most difficult thing is hiring. And after that is product market fit. What does product market fit mean? It means you build a product that people actually use and they give you money to use it. That's difficult. It is so hard. You'll be amazed at scale how hard it is to build something that people will actually pay for. Now, if you build something that's not very good, you can gloss over some of the issues by having face to face interactions. But if you make the app speak for itself, it's really hard. Also, users sometimes I don't even know how they do this. You design like the most amazing app, the button, the, the keyboard, and they click on the wrong thing every time. And so the best way in order to figure out how to build product market fit is iterations. No matter how smart you are, I promise you, you're not going to know how to build user experience that is better than other people. The only way to do it is go and put a phone in front of an actual user, see them use it, shut up and let them talk and then see what buttons they actually click on and then remove the other buttons that are not important. Are there any rules to entrepreneurship? My answer is yes. Be good to other people. Create real value. Don't create fake value. Never, ever leave somebody else holding the bag. If you're not doing that, you're just moving money around. Don't move money around. Create new money in the system. The world is not a zero sum game. It is a plus sum game. You can make the pie bigger. And then the extra amount of that pie is actually what you get in value. Always think about the core value that you are creating and who you are creating it for. Now let's talk about the sunset years of your entrepreneurship career as you get more sophisticated. Number one, it's people not actually taking the time once again to step back and think about their life. Like, why are you being an entrepreneur to begin with? Often it's because you want to provide for your family, but then you make mistakes. Like in my opinion, Elon Musk is not running his life properly because you know, he has five kids or however many kids he has, but he doesn't spend that much time with his kids. He has different preferences than me. I really care about family. For me, the number one goal in life is to have kids who are greater than me and to maximize love in my life and to make myself the best person that I can be. That comes before creating value. And so I create value partly because I want to help the world and improve the lives of people similar to me, but my kids come first. I really benefit from the fact that I'm 27. I don't need to focus on my kids. I don't have kids. And so I can really go hard on Speechify for a very long period of time before I start having my children be the center of my life. Number two is at a certain level, you also like kind of earn the privilege to focus more on creating good value and positive impact on the world. A company is a vehicle for change. Use it in that manner. My journey isn't over yet, and I'm going to be an entrepreneur for the rest of my life. Whenever things get difficult, though, I remind myself that I'm not doing it just for me. The value that the Speechify team brings to the rest of the world sometimes blows my mind. Finding the right thing to work on with the right people is something that will always be worthwhile. If you think you're one of those people who would want to work with us, 
give the app a try and send an email to Simeon at speechify.com or probeer at speechify.com or leave a comment below about why you'd be a good teammate to work with us at Speechify and we'll message you. If you found this video helpful, please make sure to share it with a friend or someone who's interested in entrepreneurship. Hit the like button below so that the algorithm knows to serve this to more people like you. Leave us a comment, subscribe, check out some of the other videos on the channel. Make sure to click below to download Speechify for iOS, Speechify for Android, Speechify for Chrome. And with that, happy listening.